Bindle is designed to leaven the whole lump. So when we have a believer come here living a double life of fornication, that their sin by the enemy, is that sin is designed to leaven the entire lump of the camp. It's designed that way. And it does, if it's not checked. What do I mean? Go to 2nd Debray Hayamim 2111. 2nd Debray Hayamim 2111. I'm talking about Zana and Pornea. Same word, one Hebrew and one English. Zana, which is the same Hebrew word for prostitution. We prostitute ourselves to another person, whether it's for money or not. When we engage in fornication, we are involved in prostitution. We may not be standing on a street corner in a red light district, but we are involved in prostituting the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh and selling ourselves in the gratification of ourselves and to another person. That is temple prostitution. It is most obscenely wicked. Second Chronicles 21.11. Now Yahweh wants you to have sexual pleasure, but he wants you to have the covenant. He wants you to have the covenant. You know what the problem with fornication is? You get self-gratification without commitment. Who was the first that sought self-gratification without commitment? Who was the first? S period A period 10. He wanted all the gratification of worship and indulgence and homage, but he wasn't make, going to make the, to receive that as part of his commitment to Yahweh. Read Yechezkel 28. Read Yeshayahu 14. Read Hashem Yahweh. So you know what I tell a lot of the folks who are fornicating? I say, okay, you were committed enough to, to, to get the sexual pleasure and the sexual um, um, uh, moment, so then you go ahead and marry that person. But then there are other complications. That person may not, may not really believe her. Now you can't marry a non-believer. That person may not be equally yoked with you. Now you can't marry, you see? And it's, it creates all kind of problems. Are you with me? It creates all kind of problems. But fornication is gratification without commitment. Sexual uh, marriage within a sexual marriage relationship is, is uh, gratification with covenant commitment. It exemplifies Yahweh's covenant commitment with the bride, Israel, his bride. When you have sex within the covenant of marriage, you are preaching the gospel. You are sharing the good news that Yahweh is intimate with his bride and his bride is intimate with Yahweh, and neither of them violate the covenant. When you fornicate, you misrepresent Yahweh, and when Moshe Rabbeinu misrepresented Yahweh, he was not allowed to enter Eretz Yisrael. Because the rock, Yeshua, only was smitten once, not twice, and Moshe Rabbeinu in his flesh smit the rock twice, Yeshua was smitten once, and Yahweh did not allow him to enter Eretz Yisrael because he misrepresented the good news. So fornication is a misrepresentation of Yahweh's covenant, his faithfulness to his bride, as well as, listen, as well as his character. You're misrepresenting him. And Yahweh does not like to be misrepresented. People like Korah and Datan that rose up in the rebellion against Moshe, the ground opened up, swallowed 250 of their collaborators. Why? Yahweh does not take well to be misrepresented. Nadab and Abayu offered strange fire before Yahweh. They were drinking and, 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 and whoring and, and being uh, drunk in, in the courts of Yahweh as well as who knows what others. And Yahweh said, no problem, you have your appointment with death prematurely. For it is appointed unto man, Hebrews 9, 27, once to die, then the judgment, and their judgment came early. So if you want to experience premature death, go ahead and misrepresent Yahweh. And when you seek sexual gratification outside the covenant of marriage, you are grossly misrepresenting Yahweh. Grossly. And he will kill you. If he doesn't kill your body, he'll kill your joy. And if he doesn't kill your joy, he'll kill your peace. And if he doesn't kill your peace, he'll, he'll, he'll declare your worship and your homage and your singing and your dancing, D-O-A, dead on arrival. It's getting quiet now. It's been quiet. 
I can understand why. Second Debray Hayamim, 21-11. Yehoram, Yehoram, not Yehoram, but Yehoram, the king of Israel, made high places in the mountains of Yehuda. I'm sorry, king of Yehuda, made high places in the mountains of Yehuda. And notice, cause the inhabitants of Yerushalayim to commit fornication and led Yehuda astray. Notice, one man caused all the inhabitants of Yerushalayim and the entire house of Yehuda was led away from Yahweh because of one man. Hello? Sexual sin cannot live without seeking the destruction of another. Write it down. Sexual sin cannot survive without seeking not the welfare or the benevolence, but the, 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 the destruction and the downfall of another, which is what makes it so nefarious. And don't go telling me that masturbation is the same thing as sexual immorality. Don't tell me that. That's a different issue. That needs to be addressed, it needs to be dealt with, but on a different level. You can't equate it as, as something that is as pernicious as, as immorality. <coughs> and don't twist my words. I'm not sanctioning that. I'm saying, in the eyes of Yahweh, one is fornication, the other is selfishness, like any other form of greed and selfishness. It's a preoccupation with self, but you can't classify it as something that can destroy the entire camp. <coughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Aren't you glad religion that binds you and truth sets you free? Aren't you glad? So here, one man made the entire house of Yehuda to go astray. Unchecked, fornication can spread, write it down, when it is not checked. Fornication is, listen, any, any, turn your neighbor and say any. Any. Okay. any. Let's try that again. Any. 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 any form of illicit sexual activity. Okay, do I have to be graphic or can we move on? We can just move on. Any form of sexual activity outside of marriage. The word of Yahweh says in the book of Ibrahim, the marriage bed is undefiled. Couples come to me all the time. I heard one pastor said this, and I heard Ralph Messer say this, and I heard Monty Judas say this, and I heard Michael Ruth say this. What say ye, Rabbi Moshe? I said, the, my first question, are the two of you married in covenant? Have fun. Enjoy. What about that backdoor stuff? Enjoy. What about oral stuff? Enjoy. Undefiled. What part of undefiled do we have trouble with? The marriage bed is undefiled. Hello? Because Yahweh doesn't care what sex is taking place as long as it's in the boundaries of the covenant. We have so many hang-ups, it's sickening. Okay, religious hang-ups. Okay, so I have couples come to me all the time and they're limiting themselves to a certain limited variety of pleasure. I think they call it missionary, I don't know what they, <laughs> and it comes right from that, from that mindset, let's be honest. Is that what they call it, missionary? They come from that, blame it on the examples. So the point is, but, but, but see, but it, we're not blaming anybody, but that's the mindset, all right? Yahweh says, here's the point, whatever, whatever sexual activity you like has my blessing, within the covenant and the boundaries of a marriage relationship. What's so hard to understand about that? But the spirit of the age tucks, it, tugs away at us and seduces us and tempts us and we give in to the spirit of the age. Then we take that, we come and worship on Shabbat and lo and behold, we are becoming like the sons of Nadab and Abihu and we will be judged by Yahweh like the sons of Eli who took the women of Israel and had sexual intercourse with them in the tent at Shiloh, in the tabernacle at Shiloh. That's what I'm telling you. When a believer fornicates, it is temple prostitution. How does that sound? Terrible. That doesn't sound good, does it? Are we not in the temple? Don't we worship in the temple? Don't we sing praises in the temple? 
Don't we fellowship and have Havura in the temple? And Yahweh calls us prostitutes. If we share that gift, that's something special, that's supposed to be a gift of intimacy with our covenant partner. Yahweh says that's temple prostitution. That's not permissible in my house. Yahweh won't allow that. And so our worship, our homage, our music, our dancing, everything we work for, everything we practice, everything we, we focus on becomes unacceptable. How would you like to know for a fact that you go home on Shabbat, 7 o'clock, you take off your shoes, and everything you did, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, Yahweh negated, he pushed it away from his throne. How would you like that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't like that. Why? Because someone was a temple prostitute. They may not have been on the street, but they were in the temple, and they were practicing zana, which is the Hebrew word for whoredom, fornication, pornea, pornography. Those who practice fornication are practicing pornography. Well, Rabbi, I, I resent that. I, um, I don't... You know, I don't have a problem with pornography. I, I don't go on the internet. I don't surf the websites. Yeah, but, but you've got girlfriends out of marriage. You've got, girl, you've got mistresses out of wedlock. That's pornography. Same word as in the Greek as anai is in the Hebrew. Same exact word. Is anyone getting this? Come on. Hashem Yahweh. Lichim, 15. Masesh Lichim. 15. Echos. Echos. 15, 20. Acts. 15 and 20. Page, please. Thank you. 1068. Okay. Therefore, verse 19, let's go back. I, Mishpat, the council in Jerusalem gave Mishpat, that we should not trouble those from among the nations. Who are those? from among the nations, those are the returning house of Ephraim. We should not trouble them um, who are epiphistro, take notes, to Elohim. Not turning, as it says in most translations, rather epiphistro, returning. Re look at that word. In Greek it is epiphistro, or returning. So those who are non-Jewish believers are the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because the Greek word doesn't say they are turning, it says they are returning to Yahweh, and the mishpat, notice mishpat, it's not cold, it's not calculated, it's not uncaring, it's not unloving to render mishpat when there is indecency and disorder in the house of Yahweh. He says, in all those nations that are returning to Elohim, here's what we, here is our mishpat, verse, verse 20. We write to them to abstain, turn to your neighbor and say abstain. We started this message with a scripture from 1 Thessalonians 4.3. Here is the will and the desire of Yahweh that you abstain from immorality and fornication. Abstain, meaning abstain until you enter into the covenant of blessed, sacred, set apart, holy matrimony. Unless you are a eunuch or, and to you is given special grace, special ability, special power to withhold yourself from sexual activity, that's even better. But not all can receive it. Yeshua said, only those who can receive it, can receive it. To the rest, it is not given. And if you, are, and if you have not been given the, the gift of celibacy, or the gift of being a eunuch, you know it, and you know it every morning, every afternoon, and every night. Before I was married to Rebbe Tenrifka, I used to cry out, ah, fire! <laughs> hot, hot, very hot. Morning, wake up, hot. Lila, wake up, we go bed, very hot. Honey, if you're always hot, there's good news. There's a husband on the way. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> and there's a female, and, and if you're a male, there's a wife on the way, because Yahweh would not, he's got a way to satisfy the fire down below, but it's not called temple prostitution. It is called those who wait on Yahweh shall renew their strength. They'll rise up with wings of eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and they shall not faint. Yeshayahu 40, 31. Those who wait on Yahweh will rise up. They'll walk and not grow weary. They'll run and they shall not faint. They shall have their strength renewed. So how do I have sexual pleasure? No problem. Just wait on Yahweh. What's your problem? Yahweh needs sometimes oh, I can't do that. I'm in a hurry. Yahweh says, okay, fine. What I'll do is I'll put you in a waiting room. Did you ever go to a doctor's office? You're in a hurry. And you're in a hurry. You want to get out because like Ted, Ted's waiting for you in the car, double parked outside. And he told you he's got another appointment and he, and he can't stay too long. Right? And but you're just in the doctor's waiting room, you're in a doctor's office, right? That's what it is with Yeshua. If you have trouble with patience, no problem. He'll bring tribulation in your life to build patience. What good is our faith if our faith can't stand a time of, of cleansing and a time of refining and a time when Yahweh is burning away all the dross as a congregation, as a Kehillah? Well, I'll serve Yahweh when all things are going good. Fine. Do you serve Yahweh when, when brothers and sisters around you are falling left and right? Do you serve Yahweh when, when, you're being, when you're being tested and tempted? In other words, what good is our faith if it can't be tested and tried? What good is our faith? Now's the time we're wondering, hmm, is Yahweh really in Bnei Yeshua Synagogue? Is this really where I'm supposed to be? Is this really the way we ought to be behaving? Asking people to leave? See, so, and your faith is being tested, big time. It's being tried, pruned, and tested, right? There's all kinds of stuff going on here, and we're wondering, I'm hoping things are being done biblically. Right? I hope things are being done properly. I hope things are being done with love, but with, with firmness. We're, our faith is being tested. A faith that can't be tested is not a faith at all. It's, it's a fantasy. It's an emotion. The emotions come and go. True faith can be challenged and tested. And the only way you'll know if it's faith or fantasy is to go through the trials and tribulations that Yahweh has ordained and assigned for you. Amen. Not, and when the people realize, they finally realize, you're not Mary Poppins. And you're not Miss Goody Two-Shoes. That you've got an evil side to you. And you have a dark side to you. And you have a pernicious side to you. And you have a side to you that is not pleasing in the eyes of Yahweh. And now everybody knows it. And the temptation is to run and hide and find a new congregation and find a new pastor. That will tell you everything is all right. Hello? That's faith that is real faith because real faith can be tested and is purified by trials. It doesn't give up. If a faith gives up when trials come, it wasn't a faith to begin with. You had no faith. You had no real faith. You had no biblical faith. You cannot declare it to be biblical faith until it survives the trials and the testings that we all go through. Does this make sense? Then we can say we have biblical faith. I need a hanky up here, please. Can someone give me a hanky, Rebbe and Rifka? That's what faith is. Faith means I've been through this, I've been through that. I've been in want, I've been in hunger. I've been in abundance, I've been in lack. I've been rich, I've been poor. I've been homeless, I've been in a castle. But in all things, in whatever state I'm in, I have therewith learned to be content. Philippians 4.11. Whatever state I'm in, I've learned. That's faith. My faith is as equal and as committed to oh, Yahweh Tzibahot as when I'm not sure about where tomorrow's meal is coming from as I am when the bank is full, the job is full, everything's going nice, everything's hunky-dory. 
Now is the time we as a congregation and we as individuals are finding out if we really have faith. Or was the faith just based on Brother X being in attendance? And when Brother X was in attendance, we felt good. But when Brother X is not in attendance, well, something's wrong, see? So in other words, our love for Yahweh was based on, on whether Brother or Sister Susie would be there. Hello? What happens if you're the only Susie left? What happens if it's just you and Rabbi Moshe? You're the only Susie left. What happens if at that point you're sleeping on me and you're the only Susie left? And what happens if the only way I can get you up is to say, wake up, little Susie, wake up. <laughs> huh? Now that's when your faith is tested. Baruch Hashem, yeah, I may try that one day. Okay. Verse 20, here is the mishpat of the council in Yerushalayim. Write to Ephraim, or returning Epiphistro from the nations, that word turning is, a bad, is, a, is an incorrect translation, write to them to abstain from what? Defilement of idols, Ephraim's short, shortcoming, from fornication, from what is strangled, and from blood from fornication. One of the things Yahweh wrote for returning Ephraim is to abstain from fornication. Why? There's, thir there's 613 mitzvahs. But Yahweh zeroed in on four mitzvahs out of all the commandments for returning Ephraim. Why? Because Ephraim has a penchant. Thank you. Ephraim has a penchant not only for idolatry, but for temple prostitution. Where did your ancestors come from? If you're Ephraim, where did your ancestors come from? They weren't raised in the synagogue. They served idolatry idols. And part of that idol worship cult was offering to Yahweh sexual gratification and pleasure, thinking that that's how you got closer to Yahweh. So Yahweh says, you see all these Ephraimites returning? Write to them. Warn them and write to them. Not only no idolatry, no fornication. Can we talk? I'm going to talk, and I don't care if it, I don't, I don't care if it costs me every member of this congregation. I don't care if it's just me and Susie. And then I got to stay in until Susie will fall asleep on me. Do you know the synagogue, the Orthodox synagogues, don't have this nonsense? Did you know that? You ever hear of the, you ever hear of the Catholic nuns who should have been married, but the church told them they couldn't marry? Because Yahweh, Yahweh said it is better to marry than to burn. The church says, if you marry, you will burn. They get pregnant. They kill the baby, dump it in the dumpster. And, they, and, and every, every week, the, the, those who would come by to collect the garbage knew that there would be discarded fetuses in the thing because they couldn't control themselves. They weren't supposed to control themselves. They were supposed to get married and honor covenant, and Yahweh would give them sexual pleasure. Instead, they became nuns. Now, if Yahweh has given you the gift of, of being a eunuch and not needing that, that, that gratification, you'll know it. Trust me, you'll know it. You will know it. You've got that ability that most of us don't have. And it's better because you're free to serve Yahweh. It's better. First Corinthians 7, read it. You're, you're free to serve Yahweh. You don't have to worry about will he, won't he? Will he, won't he? Will he come home, won't he come home? Does he like the soup? Does he not like the soup? <clears throat> is he going to kiss me today or is he going to reject me today? Okay? If he loves me, he loves me not. Those of us who are married, we're sitting home with like, you know, with, with like um, yellow daisies. He loves me, he loves me not. Monday he loves me, Tuesday he loves me not, you know. Marriage has got a whole bunch of baggage, man. Mar man, mar marriage has got a whole bunch of baggage. And single folks don't have that baggage. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. There, the scripture teaches us there's great advantage to being single and in love with Yahweh. <coughs> So here is the mishpat, abstain from whoring, 
fornication. One of the warnings to Ephraim then and today is you cannot return, listen, don't, don't say amen until you listen, you cannot return to Israel until if you're returning in fornication. Because if, if someone who is fornicating, claiming to be a believer, listen, is still a Gentile. And I'll prove it to you from scripture. The Bible calls Israelites who fornicate still Gentiles. Which is why Yaakov, on behalf of the Yerushalayim Council, warned all returning believers, when you lay aside your idolatry, make sure you lay aside all your fornication. Are we on? I said, are we on? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Ephraim cannot return in fornication. Masesh Lichim, 2125. 2125. But concerning the nations who, are, who believe, we have written and decided that they should keep themselves from what is offered to idols, blood, meaning non-kosher meats, foods, what is strangled and whoring. Hello? Keep yourself from whoring. Keep yourself. This is something that scripture says we have control of. Well, I can't help it. You're a liar. You're, that's a lie. Yahweh says, I've given you the Ruach HaKodesh, so you can bring it under control, so you can say no, so you can resist temptation, so you can resist the, the enemy, the devil, and he will flee from you. But he's not going to flee from you if you're watching MTV, ET, and Bravo, and letting all the filth into your heart, and into your eyes, and into your ears, and the music. If you let the filth come in, the filth will dictate your agenda. But if you don't want the filth to dictate your agenda, Yahweh says, I'll give you victory. He, he says abstain. He wouldn't command us to abstain and not give us the ability to abstain. He's given us the ability to abstain. But I don't want to abstain. Okay, that's fine. That's rebellion. And understand one thing. You will kill yourself and those who you claim to love around you. Which is why sexual sin is so vicious and so evil, because it destroys. It cannot live by itself. It needs other victims to dis for it to manifest. It needs other people, other victims. Does this make sense? Okay, am I making sense today? Thank you, brother. And that's a warning to Ephraim. When you leave your idolatry and your unclean worship, make sure you leave behind your... Zana in Hebrew and Pornia in Greek. Romans 128. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Romans 128. Romans 128. And even as they did not think it worthwhile to possess the knowledge of Elohim, Elohim gave them over to worthless minds to do what is improper, having been filled with all unrighteousness, whoring, so whoring, Yahweh says, those who whore do not have the mind of Yahweh. They have a worthless what? A worthless mind. But watch this. That's, the, that's, not, that's not the worth part. Greed, evil, they're filled with envy, murder, fighting, deceit, evil habits. Whisperers, gossipers, slanders. Did you know that gossip, gossip, slander, is coming from a worthless mind? Did you know that? You don't have anything else to talk about except the rabbi and his wife. That's all I got to talk about. I don't have nothing else to talk about. How about scripture? Let's talk about Jeremiah. Let's talk about Yeshayahu. Let's talk about Moshe Rabbeinu. There's plenty of stuff in the word of Yahweh to talk about. Slanderers, haters of Elohim, insolent, proud, boasters, devisers of evil, disobedient to parents, without discernment, covenant breakers. Notice, a, a uh, fornicator is in essence a what? A covenant breaker unloving, unforgiving, okay? He said, well, I just love them. You don't love that person. You don't love them. Because if you love them, you would have covenant with them. Hello? You're using them. They're using you. And, and what's happening is you're engaged in two worthless minds becoming one. <laughs> Instead of two believers becoming one flesh and serving the kingdom. Now you got two worthless minds. When two believers become one flesh, they serve the kingdom. When two worthless minds 
chase each other in sexual attraction without first being committed to Yeshua and in the covenant of blessed holy matrimony is two worthless minds getting hooked up. But that's not, that's not the worst part. If it was just a worthless mind, that's fine. It's worse than that. Look at verse 32, Romans 1, 32. Who though they know the righteousness of Elohim, who is the righteousness of Elohim? Messiah Yahshua. That the, and he, even though they know that those who practice these things, like, meaning whoredom, fornication, deserve death. Well, wait, time out, Rabbi. I thought we're under grace. I thought great. I thought the, the law was to Deuteronomy, and Romans is part of the covenant of grace.